Hey y'all, it's Ryan, and I'm so excited to talk to you today about the most immediately relevant topic I've covered on this channel. How psychologists can help healthcare teams work better during the high stress circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. This paper was written by one of my best friends, Allison Trailer, who's also a graduate student at Rice. Allison studies teams in the workplace with her advisor, Dr. Eduardo Salas. And I'll let Allison start by describing why they wrote this paper. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare teams are really on the front lines of the pandemic and have had to adapt and kind of experience really high levels of stress for prolonged periods of time as the number of COVID cases rise in their region. So they might have kind of a chance to rebound in between phases of the virus, potentially, but we see that when there's an outbreak in an area of the U.S. or in a country across the world, hospitals and medical professionals in that area are really um, kind of tasked with being on the front lines and undergo a lot of stress that lasts for potentially months on end. Psychologists have spent decades trying to understand what happens to teams when they're under stress and how to mitigate the effects of stress on team performance. And although the conditions that are facing healthcare teams during this pandemic are in many ways unprecedented, the same principles that come from have come from studying teams under stress across a number of contexts apply. This team of psychologists has plenty of experience studying other teams in very extreme environments. And our art article was really focused on synthesizing existing research on team stress, but in the context of COVID-19 in hospitals and for healthcare teams, and trying to provide psychologists with the information that they need to help teams maintain high levels of performance, um, despite the levels of stress that they experience on the front lines of this pandemic. What kind of stressors do healthcare teams face right now? The hospitals were already dealing with staffing shortages before the pandemic. But now, with more patients and absences because of COVID-19, staffing issues are resulting in people shifting into different roles. And shifts in staffing impact teams by increasing people's role ambiguity. And ambiguity is one of the easiest ways to stress us out. You might be wondering what the quantifiable or measurable impact of stressors is on teams. And what we tend to find is that stress has a negative impact on team performance. It can cause team members to lose their team focus and instead become very narrowly focused on their own individual tasks. It can also cause teams to lose their sense that they can succeed at their job or whatever they're tasked with as a team. So team scientists conceptualize how stressors impact team functioning using what looks like a super complex model. It's called an input mediator output input model of teamwork. So the idea is that team Team inputs, like the context or conditions for teamwork, influence other factors called mediators. And a mediator in general just means that it explains at least part of why an effect is happening. So here the mediators are team processes and emergent states. I'll tell you more about emergent states in a minute. And these then generate team outcomes like performance or affect and create the conditions that teams will perform under the next time around. So the cool thing here is that the recommendations in this paper apply very broadly to healthcare teams that are impacted by COVID-19. On the team input side, COVID-19 has impacted inputs like the organizational context and team structure. So context-wise, teams are working with more uncertainty than normal and doing so with fewer resources. More uncertainty makes it more difficult for teams to communicate, make decisions, or maintain optimism even. For example, staffing issues can reflect increased turnover, which may alter the characteristics of a person's teammates very suddenly. Okay, let's move to the mediators. Here the authors discuss emergent states, which are constructs that characterize properties of teams that are typically dynamic in nature and vary as a function of the team context, inputs, processes, and outcomes. Let's dive into some of the most likely emergent states to be impacted by these pandemic stressors. First, collective efficacy. So the shared sense that a team can accomplish its goal. Past success can help frontline teams foster this, but some medical teams may feel like they're continuously failing just over and over and over again. And of course, this sequence is not good for the team. Second, task vigilance. So how well can the team maintain focus over a long period of time? This is essential for healthcare teams, right? Over time, with the increased home demands and sustained high workload, it'll become really difficult to focus on the bigger picture and on the team versus the individual or yourself. 
which of course is understandable if you're stressed about childcare or an elderly family member. Next is really important, psychological safety, which describes a shared sense that a team can safely take interpersonal risks. High psychological safety is good because it means that the team members are more able to speak up when they see an issue or ask questions when they're uncertain. Oof. This seems like a lot of trouble for frontline healthcare workers right now, right? However, we also know that there are a lot of things that teams can do to buffer the effects of stress on team outcomes or to avoid those negative performance outcomes of stress. The authors break down the options into timeframes of either preparing to perform during a performance episode or after a performance episode. When preparing to perform, pre-briefing allows teams to strategize together and coordinate their actions, especially important if the team or some team member are new. During a performance episode, backup behavior, which involves any assistance to a team member to help them perform their work, such as coaching or helping a teammate complete tasks, can improve both performance and affective outcomes for teams. Providing backup by offering to help or just complete a task for another teammate might give that person time to decompress and call a family member. After a performance episode, debriefing allows team members to share what is working despite insufficient resources and brainstorm creative solutions to problems they're fighting. A meta-analysis is a method of gathering information across lots of different studies, and meta-analyses in the past have indicated that debriefing can improve team performance by 20 to 25 percent. Debriefing can also help build psychological safety as team members and especially leaders can admit something they don't know or a mistake that they may have made, which makes others more likely to speak up. And importantly, debriefing can be a chance to also focus on what is working. Wins feel infrequent and out of people's control during this pandemic, so directing teams to focus on what is working can boost their collective efficacy by reminding them of their successes. And lastly, how can healthcare teams recover from a wave of the pandemic and prepare for the next disaster? whether pandemic related or not. We talk about how teams can be resilient and rebuild not only between phases or between waves of the pandemic in their area, but also after the pandemic is over. So we know that, you know, after the pandemic ends, we're gonna want these teams to kind of learn from their experiences working through the current pandemic and to prepare them for potentially another epidemic or pandemic outbreak or other types of catastrophes that they may face. Again, debriefing is one of the most most effective tools available for teams. Debriefing in this capacity helps teams to know where the team has built new skills or strengthened areas that will benefit the team in the future. These discussions should always frame mistakes as learning opportunities because this boosts the team's psychological safety and helps buffer the team from losing collective self-efficacy. If a team isn't afraid of judgment for failing, then team members can share their mistakes so the team can learn and build for better future outcomes. Of course, it's also important to help team members psychologically, given the intense psychological stress and trauma that healthcare workers are likely to face during and after the pandemic. Promoting team well-being, for example, by checking in on one another, can help teams working in high-stress environments. Finally, recognizing the role of everyone involved, so not just the doctors and the nurses, who totally deserve the recognition, right? But hospital staff members do too. Staff members aren't getting the same praise. Gratitude towards everyone on the team and supporting the team can help to foster that sense that everyone contributed to getting through this enormous crisis. There's a lot more in this paper and I definitely encourage you to check it all out, but hopefully this gives you an overview of how team processes are studied and conceptualized and how healthcare teams can mitigate the extreme stress of this pandemic. All right, y'all, that's all for today. Thanks for stopping by. Please click like or subscribe for more videos like this.